So members, today we are going to look at what we call respiration. Remember, respiration is a, one of the vital processes in the body. Actually, it is a catabolic process. It involves breakdown of materials. However, it is a process that yields energy. So when we are looking at respiration, obviously we are going to define it as the oxidative breakdown of food to liberate what? Energy. Or the oxygen breakdown of food to liberate energy. So mainly we are not producing energy, but we are releasing what? Releasing energy. So when you look at the overall process of respiration, you, we are going to categorize respiration into two categories or pathways. We have, we have what you call the aerobic respiration and then anaerobic respiration. Now remember, as remember, if you are going to look at an overview, respiration is going to begin with a glucose molecule, which is a six carbon sugar. The six carbon sugar, as we are seeing there on your video, there your screen, is going to split into two molecules of what we call pyruvic acid or pyruvate. That process of split, you are going to see it occurring in the cytoplasm and doesn't require a lot of energy. By itself, is yielding energy. You can see that it's going to yield to ATP. And that process we shall see it as glycolysis, where you are converting a six carbon sugar molecule into two into two molecules of three carbon compound and the three carbon compound is what we call pyruvate or pyruvic what acid now after forming the pyruvic acid or pyruvate it now is going to depend on the animal whether to take a channel of aerobic respiration or take a channel of anaerobic respiration if you are taking the channel of aerobic respiration as you are looking at that arrow we are going to end up yielding a total of 34 ATPs. But if you are going to take the other channel where there is no oxygen, now we are going to end up yielding only two ATPs, those ones we are seeing from glucose to pyruvate. But if we are taking aerobic, we are going to continue downwards as we are going to see in details. Now, when it is occurring in the presence of oxygen, we say it is aerobic respiration. This one is going to yield the same products in all organisms, yielding water and carbon dioxide and the energy which we have talked about. But now when you are going to talk about that one which does not involve oxygen or you are calling fermentation, this one is made done by some organisms, including animals, bacteria, and even some plants. But what matters, the products being formed. We are going to discover that in yeast and plant, it is going to yield the alcohol and the carbon dioxide with, with now the other energy of the two ATPs. Now this one is common like Nairo Brewery. Even locally, when they are fermenting, they are applying yeast. Then in some plants, obviously, you always get alcohol, or the wine is what, and so on. That is fermentation. That is respiration in absence of oxygen. But still, oxidation will take place. Don't you look at absence of oxygen and you say there is no oxidation. There is oxidation. Now, it can even occur in animals, the animals like human beings, we human beings, and then it is going to produce what you call lactic acid or lactate. Take an example when you do vigorous activity, lactic acid is what to accumulate. That is from absence of oxygen. And the glucose is being now, ZIB is being converted into lactic what? Lactic acid. Again, to bring a clear picture of what we are calling respiration, we have to appreciate all of these steps which we have to grasp properly. Once you grasp them properly, you, they will say now really, biologically you can support yourself. The special that question which is always asking you to, to describe where the 34 ATPs are coming from. Now majorly we are going to begin with our cytoplasm where we talked about glycolysis. Remember glycolysis members, fellow biologists, you are converting glucose to pyruvic acid. And remember we have said you are yielding two ATPs there. You are yielding two ATPs at that point, then from there we are seeing that after converting the glucose to pyruvate or pyruvic acid, then we are going to see that the pyruvic acid, remember glucose is a six carbon sugar molecule, then is being broken down, actually we are calling it lysis, we are splitting it, that is lysis, into two molecules of pyruvic acid which is three carbon atoms, having three carbon atoms. Then now we are converting pyruvic, another step, that is step one of glycolysis. Then step two, we are seeing you're converting the pyruvate or pyruvic acid into acetyl CoA. That one is a linking reaction, just design interconversion step, where you're converting pyruvic acid, 
which is three carbon sugar molecule to now acetyl which acetyl is carried by enzyme co a and now the combination is going to become acetyl co a that linking reaction also we are going to look at it then if from linking there now the acetyl co a is taking the acetyl away remember acetyl is two carbon molecule is taking it now to what we call the Krebsy cycle. Krebsy cycle, what we call also calling the cyclic cycle or the tricarboxylic what cycle. This one is occurring inside the mitochondria. Don't forget, you can look at that video that show the mitochondria now. Acetyl is moving now from now that point of pyruvic acid converted to acetyl then carried by CoA and now is the complex of acetyl CoA now to into the mitochondria where we are seeing now. Citric acid cycle or the Krebs what? Krebs cycle. Then as you are looking at Krebs cycle, you are going to see some hydrogens. Some hydrogens will be lost as you are moving ahead there. Which will be taken now to what you call electron transport system. And then the chemo osmosis now. We have chemo osmosis and then electron transport system there. Now we are going to see carriers there of hydrogen or acceptors and so on. What we are calling the FAD and the NAD. And then we are going to see how the ATP is going to come out. We are going to start the end. We are seeing the 34 ATPs there. Then you have the two ATPs which came from glycolysis, And you have the other two ATPs from the linking process. And then you are summing up to the top 38 ATPs. But you are showing the levels. Now, members, as we have said before, that the whole process is beginning with glycolysis. The whole process is beginning with glycolysis. Try to look at that diagram on your screen. You are going to discover that glycolysis as a process. What have you seen? You are going to see that you are spending two ATPs. This one is able to energize the process. And now you are seeing that you are producing four ATPs from glycolysis. But because now you brought in two to help you to energize the process, now the net production or productivity at that step, we are seeing two ATPs. But remember the process of glycolysis is occurring in the cytoplasm. When you look at that diagram, you are seeing cytoplasm. Then glycolysis begins with what? Glycolysis is beginning with a six carbon sugar, that is the glucose. Then it's going to be converted to pyruvic acid or pyruvate, which is a three carbon molecule. But you can also see that in, there are two molecules after lysis. One glucose is giving us two molecules of pyruvic acid or pyruvate. But this one, you will see that there is some ATP and some NAD involved there. Meaning you are producing two ATPs, then there are some hydrogens you are losing, which are going to be taken by two NADs. That one, you are going to see them under electron transport, what? Electron transport system. Members, during glycolysis, try to look at the diagram properly. We are seeing that a six carbon sugar molecule, you can see those green balls that are representing it, the six carbon, they are six in number, is going to become phosphorylated. The six carbon sugar molecule is going to become phosphorylated. And that process of phosphorylating it, you are adding phosph phosphorus or phosphate, and we are calling it phosphorylation. You can see step one is phosphorylation. That process, the phosphate you are adding, or the phosphorus you are adding, you have to bring it now into the process. The energy is the process. Section is why some you are seeing energy investment. Now the phosphorus you have added, the phosphorus you have added is going to make now the sugar phosphorylated. Now you move down as you are following up that red cursor, you discover that now we have two phosphorus, one on the left, one on the right. Now our sugar now, you can see that you can even change the name. It can even be, become glucose, one what, one or six by what, by phosphate. But we are not illustrating it there. This implies that now we have added the phosphorus to the six sugar molecule, which was glucose, and the process we are calling phosphorylation. Why? Because you have added phosphorus to the six, six carbon glucose what? molecules. What have you done? You have invested two ATPs. And the overall process is going to yield the four ATPs, as we have said, but the net gain is going to become two. Because the two you have already added them yourself to energize the what? The process. Then the second step, as we are looking there of glycolysis, we are going to look at what we call lysis. Some are stable. Don't forget that. Now, members, we are seeing in our lysis now, 
Assuming that now the phosphorylated glucose molecule is going to break down. That is what we are meaning by lysis or splits. When it splits, we are seeing we are obtaining two molecules. So we have obtained two molecules. Two molecules, but remember these molecules which have obtained they are two, they are two in number, and then they have three carbons each. But remember each side they have what we call phosphorus. You can see we have two phosphorus atom or phosphate groups attached to them. So what happens now? The whole process of breaking down the other phosphorylated sugar into two molecules is what we are calling lysis. That one we are not seeing any expenditure of energy and or, or any harvest of energy. Now we let us try to move downwards and we try to look at oxidation. When we come to oxidation we are seeing that Remember when you are doing any oxidation, there must be reduction. You are losing electrons, there must be something to take away the electrons you are losing. Now what happens here, we are seeing that as the molecules you have formed there, which are unstable, the molecules you have formed there with the two phosphate groups from the six carbon glucose molecule, we are seeing that hydrogen is going to be lost. The hydrogen which is going to be lost here, we are seeing it itself being attached to what you call NADH. Now when you look at one molecule, one molecule on left hand side for example, you are going to yield the energy which is two ATPs. Two ATPs from where look upwards at the lysis point, you have two phosphorus atoms on either side of the molecule. Now one of phosphorus combining with ATP, ADP, combining with ADP to form the first ATP. Then the second atom also combined with another ADP to form the second ATP. So each molecule is yielding two ATPs. So we are seeing two ATPs from the left hand molecule, and we are seeing another two ATPs from the right hand molecule. So now from there, we are going to see that the energy harvest there, which is measured in terms of ATP, we are going to see that you are harvesting energy of four ATPs. But remember, when you are beginning the process, you invested the energy of two ATPs. Now, we are going to see that our net gain of the ATPs is going to be two ATPs out of the four. Because the other one, which energizes the process, they were not yours. So, we have a net gain of two ATPs as you are following that cursor. We are trying to enclose, try to follow the red enclosure there, which they are doing, the circles. And now, from there, the whole process of glycolysis in the cytoplasm is going to be two. ATPs. But how have you summarized? I was saying, how have we summarized it? the whole process of glycolysis? We are seeing glycolysis as a process is divided into three steps. Phosphorylation, that is when you are adding phosphorus. Then lysis, that is when the six carbon sugar is breaking down to form the three carbon sugar molecules, but they are two. Then from, from, from lysis, we are seeing that you have oxidation. Oxidation, you are doing what? You are removing you are removing hydrogen and then when you remove hydrogen you are forming pyruvic acid or pyruvate. Then the hydrogen you have removed is going to be taken by NAD. Which NAD now we shall be we are going to see the NAD and the electron transport system. But remember the phosphorus on each molecule which was splitting is going to form two ATPs. Because we are seeing two phosphorus atoms combining with the two ADPs to form two ATPs. Therefore, if we bring the two molecules from the six carbon sugar, we are reading the four ATPs. But remember, what do we consider out of the four? We consider only two. So now when you look at that flow diagram, for glycolysis, let us try to take the glycolysis. What have we done with glycolysis? We have converted the six carbon molecule into two molecules of three carbons, which are called pyruvic acid. Then, what have I yielded? I've yielded two ATPs. Remember, the way we had the four, but now the net ones, they are two, as you are circling those two. Then, what have you also used? You have used, you have even added hydrogen on NAD, so you are reducing the hydrogen. After oxidizing glucose, where there is oxidation, there is a reduction. This is a redox process. You reduce, you oxidize. So, you have oxidized the the glucose and then you are seeing that the NAD has been what reduced who is reducing you have added the hydrogen so the overall process of glycolysis is that six carbon to, to two three carbon molecules 
then one nad which has been reduced which nad we are going to see is going to use three atps and electron transport system when we reach there now members after becoming vast with what we call glycolysis remember glycolysis has formed what we call the pyruvic acid now the pyruvic acid cannot move directly into what we call the krebui cycle so the pyruvic acid does not move directly to the krebui cycle there must be what we call a link reaction this link reaction members biologically we are, we are going to convert the pyruvic acid which you have formed in glycolysis to what we call acetyl remember acetyl as you are looking at that flow diagram acetyl is going to become a two carbon molecule but pyruvic acid add, add how many carbon atoms add three now what are we going to do we are going to do what we call decarboxylating decarboxylating it means b means you are removing something carboxyl means the carbon so you are going to remove one pyruvic acid or the pyruvate so as we are removing the one carbon then we are going to remain with two carbons so the molecule you are going to form from pyruvate or pyruvic acid is going to become that one over acetyl with two carbons but as you are removing the one carbon the one carbon you are removing you have already oxidized the pyruvic acid you have added oxygen to pyruvic acid therefore the one carbon which is from the pyruvic acid is going to form what you call the carbon dioxide and you can see the carbon dioxide is being given what being given off but remember as you are breaking down the bond in the pyruvic acid to lose the one carbon there is energy energy which is lost the energy which is lost is going to be used is, by the way there is energy and some electrons that one is going to be used now to reduce the nad positive to nad h now nad h we are going to sit in electron transport what electron transport system so now when you look at the all pro link reaction remember link reaction we are meaning converting pyruvic acid to acetyl now the acetyl we have formed can can only be carried into the krebui cycle by what we call an enzyme which is called a which is working as a confactor now when you bring enzyme called a becoming attached to a two carbon molecule then the whole complex becomes acetyl coa but coa is an enzyme acetyl is a molecule have formed how have you formed it that is by decarboxylating the pyruvic acid decarboxylating it means you have removed the carbon which carbon formed the carbon dioxide oxide and that carbon dioxide will come out from respiration still as a gas given we are talking about like the respiration produces carbon dioxide that is that is the carbon dioxide which is coming what out so what have we formed we have formed the nad we have formed the acetyl which acetyl has been carried by coa to what you call krebui cycle so the whole process of link reaction we are seeing is beginning with what is beginning with pyruvate which is a three carbon molecule and is ending with what is ending with acetyl coa but remember coa is an enzyme what have you read you have read two carbon dioxide molecules from where this is now for one molecule but now when you bring the two molecules which came from the six carbon sugar we are seeing that now we have two molecules of carbon dioxide and you have two nads because one molecule of pyruvic acid yields one nad but now there are two molecules so those are two nads one molecule is yielding one carbon dioxide so it means you have two molecules of carbon dioxide one molecule of pyruvic acid yields one acetyl it means now you have two acetyls and so now members remember in glycolysis we form the pyruvic acid and we say the glycolysis is occurring in cytoplasm then we are seeing the pyruvic acid we have formed which is a three carbon sugar molecule remember now we have three pyruvic acids one from one molecule another from another molecule so glycolysis is yielding two pyruvic acid molecules now these two molecules cannot move directly into the krebui cycle now they are going to be now they are going to be converted fast into what you call acetyl which is a two carbon sugar molecule and is going to be carried by what you call enzyme called a to the krebui cycle meaning we are losing there one carbon when you are losing one carbon it implies that we are decarboxylating decarboxylating it means you are removing one carbon as i've already told you there under the link reaction now we are reaching the krebui cycle krebui cycle is also occurring in the matrix of the mitochondria so we are seeing our acetyl is being carried by coa now to, to 
the Kerebu Saiko. When you reach the Kerebu Saiko, our two sugar molecules are set are being carried by enzyme called A. It is going to combine with the a four sugar molecule which we are calling oxaloacetic acid or oxaloacetate. When they combine, now they are going to form a complex sugar having six carbon molecules. Sorry, having six carbon atoms. Two from acetyl and four from oxaloacetic what? acid. Now they form six carbon sugar molecules. Now after forming the six carbon sugar molecules, as we are following up that scheme, remember the blue ones, those circles or the balls in the blue, they are the carbon is now. We are seeing the two combining with the, the four. When the two combine with the four, you form the six. You can look at that arrow, the second on your right. Now when you form the six, that six sugar compound which you have formed is one we are calling the citrate or the citric acid. Now, after forming it, the citrate or the citric acid is going to be decarboxylated. When you are decarboxylating, you are breaking a bond already in the carbon. You are losing carbon. When you are breaking the bond, it means you are going to lose energy. And there is some energy and there is some electrons. The electrons which are being lost now are going to be used now to reduce the NAD to form a NAD H. So there is one NAD there. And now the energy... The energy is going to be used now. You can see if you are losing energy and electrons, the citric acid is going to become oxidized. The process of oxidation there, they are going to form one molecule of carbon dioxide. Then our journey is to take back a day, six carbon sugar molecule into four carbon sugar molecule. So the second step we are seeing there, even this, the five carbon sugar molecule which has been formed is going to be further decarboxylated to produce another carbon dioxide molecule. And where does the carbon dioxide come from? It means you have removed one carbon. When you remove one carbon, it means you have done oxidation and reduction. Oxidation, you are losing electrons. Reduction, you are adding electrons. Electrons are being added to the NAD to form NAD H. Then the energy there is oxidizing to form carbon dioxide. Then that five sugar carbon compound is what we are calling alpha ketoglutarate or alpha Glutaric acid. Other books are called. Now we are saying the five carbon sugar molecule again, members, is going to be decarboxylated further. But remember, when I sound decarboxylated, just know you are removing one carbon. And when you remove one carbon, you are doing oxidation and you are doing at the same time what? Reduction. Now we are going to see there now the third NAD. The first NAD was NAD H was to convert citrate to alpha ketoglutaric acid. Then the second NAD, we converted that five carbon sugar molecule to now to a four carbon sugar molecule, that is oxaloacetic acid, must remain, that molecule must remain in the cycle. This one is the beginning of our Kerebu cycle and must be regenerated. Now regenerating it, we are seeing we have used how many NADs. There are three NADs, follow up that scheme diagram, one, two, three NADs. But now at each at the, the point of forming the first NAD and the second NAD, we have lost carbon dioxide. There are two molecules of carbon dioxide there. Look at them. Now, when you come there, we are seeing that the NAD is acting as an electron acceptor. We are going to see it under electron transport system is an energy carrier in simple terms. But doesn't carry energy alone is being helped by what we call the FAD. So we are seeing in the process of regenerating the real oxaloacetic acid which you started with, you are going to apply even the FAD at the last step. So we are seeing the FAD coming in. So we are going to see the activity of the role of the FAD and the role of the NAD and the electron transport system. Remember, it is our step which you are going to see last. Our first step was glycolysis, then we moved to the link reaction, now we moved to Krebu cycle, now we are going to move the electron transport system. Now the whole process of the Krebu cycle is occurring now twice. Now for the whole process to occur, it yields one ATP. So we are seeing the whole cycle yielding one ATP. So when you, remember this is for one molecule, then when you bring now two molecules doing the same thing, so we are going to Averse to ATPs from the cycle. So when you go back to our flow diagram there, we said the glycolysis is ready to ATPs, don't forget. Then in the other part of the energy link, you read also how many ATPs, don't forget that point. Then we are coming here also, we are saying 
the Kerebu cycle, the overall Kerebu cycle is going to yield to ATPs. One one from each molecule. And how many fads? You have yielded how many fads? You have two fads, you have two ATPs, you have how many carbonoxide molecules? There are four. Two from one molecule, then another two from another molecule. Even if had one from one molecule, then if and a second fad from a second molecule, so you have total of two. Then the ATP is total of two. Carbon dioxide total of four. How many acetyloco A you brought? You brought two acetyloco A. Now, members, when you look at the carbonic atoms which we add at the beginning in our sugar molecule, before say, the glycolysis, they add six carbons. So, what happened to the carbon is now? All of the carbon is now, all of the carbon is we have used them. Because remember, remember we lost how many? We lost how many? We lost two carbons. When we are at the point of turning to acetyloco A, because we had the six, then the, the, the compound split. When the split, we got three, three on either sides. Then from three, three on either sides, we lost one, one. One, one to turn it to acetyl, from pyruvic acid to acetyl. Then this one remains how many? Two, two. Now what are we seeing here in the Kerebu cycle? We have decarboxylated two times. We have lost two carbons for one molecule. Then for the second molecule also we are losing two. So when you form four carbon dioxide, it means you have used the four carbons, which we are remaining, meaning all the carbons for the sugar. Now at the point of Kerebu cycle, all of them have been used up. But the energy is which the energy which they had, that energy now is being carried by energy carriers. Which energy carriers are going to take the energy there in electron transport system to, to see how it is going to be converted into other forms of what? Forms of energy. But remember, Kerebu cycle has zero down many TPs. Electron transport system or electron transport chain, what we can call the respiratory chain. We cannot talk about it properly without talking about chemio osmosis. Many the chemio osmosis we are seeing the movement of ion ions along their concentration of what gradient. We already see that the matrix the matrix of a mitochondria is having a lot of protons. And what happens is the protons are passing via the protein carriers, then they move from matrix to what you call the intermembrane space. Now, when they reach intermembrane space, again, we have, along with the membrane, we have what we call ATP synthesis. Now, those hydrogen or the protons are going to move from the intermembrane space back to the matrix via the ATP synthesis. Now, that the hydrogen is, remember, those hydrogens are not... Are, are